Hi, my name is Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the Chair of Wisdom and answer all your questions about the First World War. Bernhard Rindlisbacher on Patreon writes, I once heard something of a Bourbaki army that was obviously interned in Switzerland at the beginning of the war. Do you know anything about this? Um, for those of you who don't know, Charles Denis Bourbaki was a French general who was the commander of the French Eastern Army during the siege of Belfort in the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. Now his task was to push into Alsace and cut off the German supply lines from the Rhine. But the Germans intercepted and defeated him at the Battle of Lisane. Now, on the retreat, he and his men were demoralized. They had no supplies. So the nearly 90,000 strong French army crossed into neutral Switzerland to escape being destroyed by the Prussians. There they were interned for the rest of the war. For your question, no, I never heard anything like that in the Great War. There were soldiers, sometimes groups of soldiers from Germany, France, Italy, and Austria that tried to escape conscription or simply deserted from their units into Switzerland. But I don't think that happened on such a large scale. Um, now the main reason for that would be that, unlike, say, the Franco-Prussian War, the main offensives and the big armies were fighting further north or around Verdun. In Alsace and close to the Swiss borders, um, the French, after their initial plans had failed, repeatedly tried to push the Germans out of the Vosges, but never on such a huge scale. Um, both sides, their armies were occupied further away from the Swiss borders. In 1916, though, Switzerland would allow sick prisoners from both sides to be treated there. And they had a fair amount of internees but I'm not certain about anything major. Feel free to uh, contact us and correct us on that if you know something about this. Though. Um, Jan Krali writes, oh, from Patreon, uh, a strange question, maybe. Why is the Entente sometimes referred to as the Allies? I understand that in World War II, the narrative is how the world allied itself against the evil of the Axis powers, and that black and white portrait sort of holds true for World War II, but it's pretty much a given that there weren't really any good or bad guys in World War I, von Hotzendorf <laughs> excluded, okay? Uh, so why call, is he a good guy or a bad guy? So why call one side the allies? I mean, the central powers were allied to each other, right? So why not call them the allies instead? Well, you have a very good point there. Technically, the Triple Entente, or the Entente Cordiale, was formed to counterbalance the Triple Alliance of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. Italy was allied with Germany and Austria, Hungary before the war, in case you didn't know that. Um, now, at that point, it would be far more intuitive to call the other side the Allies, to call the Central Powers the Allies. The term alliance was very deeply embedded into the 19th century. You know, nowadays, it's been replaced by the word coalition. Um, there was the dual alliance, the Franco-Russian alliance, there was even an Austro-Serbian alliance. So the word was very widely used at that time. At the time of the Great War, allies fought allies, you're right. But in hindsight, mostly from a popular standpoint, it was easier to distinguish the two sides. Since the Triple Alliance broke up, and the Triple Entente drew in more and more and more countries to their cause, it was easier to simplify the terms. And was Hotzendorf really so bad once you got to know him? I'm sure he had a bunch of character flaws, but who doesn't have character flaws? He was a great dancer. He was fun at parties. Boy, could he play the marimbas, man. You ever heard him play the marimbas? Oh, geez, you don't know what you're missing. Conrad von Hotzendorf, marimba king. Uh, Edebon from Reddit writes, can you explain the history of the trench coat? I heard that Burberry invented them specifically for the English soldiers of World War I. It's not exactly clear who invented the original design of the trench coat. Some sources date it back to the 1850s, but it was Thomas Burberry who invented gabardine in 1879, a form of tight woven fabric and wool which was extra water resistant. Um, it was fashionable in the British officer corps to wear a long great coat in their cam campaigns, and the new version by Burberry was lighter, 
It had deep pockets on either side, which were ideal for storing maps and paperwork. Uh, the big belt had rings pounded into it where you could attach equipment, while your neck was protected from rain by its high collar. The subdued brown color fitted perfectly into trench reality, and it soon became a mass-produced good exclusively for officers. Even during the war, the coat was sold in civilian versions to the public at home, and it kept its nickname Trench Coat long after and even up to today, not only as a popular item in detective novels or movies from Hollywood. Um, most people probably aren't aware what the trench actually refers to when you talk about it, but of course the trench coat refers to these trenches. We actually did, a, we did an entire special about British uniforms of the war, and you can click right here to see that. I will see you soon for our regular episodes. Don't forget to subscribe.